Hello. Hey. Thank you for joining me for an episode sure. of Polylogs. Um, so we have no s small subject, um, that being the history of computer science. So I'm just kind right. of, you know, wading in and seeing where it goes. Um, but maybe I should ask you to position yourself in the, the timeline first. Like, how would you say that you became a computer scientist? What? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, it seems pompous to position myself in the whole history of computer science. But uh, I mean, okay, I, I, I uh, uh, joined, you know, I mean, I, I uh, uh, um, started studying at the undergraduate level in uh, 1996, I guess. But I, uh, um, I wanted to uh, create my own video game, mostly. I mean, I mean that was that was what uh, uh, um, hooked me as a kid. Uh, that you know that that, that a, a, a Nintendo game seemed like this whole universe in miniature, right? And yet, you know, unlike the physical universe, uh, someone completely understood that universe because someone had created it, right? Or you know, so I mean, you know, some someone who you could uh, actually go and talk to, right? And uh, um, you know, and, and 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 it seemed like if if I could understand how how games were, how, how you would create your own game, uh, then you know, I would really understand something deep. But uh, uh, I, um, I didn't have the idea of universality, right? So I imagined that it was some kind of complicated engineering. And, um, you know, even, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you need a giant factory to, uh, you know, assemble programs or something. You know, when I first saw what programming was uh, when I was 11 or so, it was a revelation. It was kind of like learning where babies come from, right? It was like, why didn't anyone tell me this earlier? Uh, it, um, uh, you know, just, just, just that, that, that there's this simple set of instructions and, and once you learn them, that's it. Right, that, that's all, you know, it's all just a matter of how you combine them. And, uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was an even bigger revelation, you know, to learn that, that uh, the church touring season, right? That it's not just that there's this one programming language, but then, you know, later I'm gonna learn a more advanced programming language with which you could express things that you couldn't possibly express in the first one, right? And so on and so on forever. I said, no. Once you've learned your first programming language, you have learned, you know, the entire rule set that governs every computer that's ever been created, right? Uh, all the programming languages can emulate each other, you know, in some formal sense, they're all equivalent to each other. It's just, you know, some are more convenient, you know, and, and all the computers that have been built are, are equivalent in some sense. It's just that some are faster or slower, some have more or less memory. And so, so, so there's just this tiny set of rules that you need to learn about, you know, reading and writing symbols and uh, changing state and uh, uh, moving around in memory and uh, things like that. And in some sense, uh, once you've learned them, then, then uh, you know, at least formally, you've learned the rules for anything in the universe. Right, that is pretty wonderful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, no, I mean, I mean, I, uh, uh, I, I did, you know, when, when I was a teenager, think of, you know, becoming a software developer of, of some kind or, uh, you know, maybe starting a company. Uh, but, you know, I, I sort of got uh, disabused of those notions, you know, by uh, uh, sort of um, finding out, you know, just how much better uh, other people were that, than I was at sort of uh, uh, maintaining large amounts of code you know, uh, documenting their code, uh, getting it done on time, getting their code to work with other people's code, you know, and all of those, you know, different very hard aspects of software engineering and of projects. And, uh, uh, you know, if I was, you know, and I, I, I got more and more sort of bored for better or worse to the, to the mathematical side of things, hmm. uh, just, just, just trying to understand what's possible. And, um, yeah, and, and uh, uh, here, here I still am, uh, you know, a quarter of a century later. To get down to sort of the, the fundamentals, um, yeah. you know, how do you define computing or computer science? 
Uh, yeah, so, so the famous quote from Dijkstra uh, said that computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescopes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, um, um, computer science is, uh, uh, well, it, 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 it's the study of, uh, uh, let's say, what, 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 what you can do with, uh, uh, you know, precise sets of rules, right? With, uh, 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 computations, meaning, you know, just uh, sort of manipulations of symbols according to rules, right? And, uh, you know, in that way, it is very, very closely allied with math. In fact, you know, for, 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 for most of history, uh, I think computer science would have been very hard to distinguish from math. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it has a different uh, uh, aesthetic, maybe, and a different focus. Uh, because, you know, the, uh, um, the, you know, un, 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 um, unlike in math, you know, our, our goal is not just proving that things exist, you know, it is always sort of figuring out how to uh, construct those things. And then even more concretely than that, you know, figuring out like what resources you need to, you know, to actually uh, 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 find, you know, the prime factorization of a number or find, uh, you know, the shortest path uh, through a graph or, or anything like that. And so, so I would, I think of computer science as a continuum. You know, at, at one extreme of the continuum, it simply is math, right? I mean, uh, 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 um, um, theoretical computer science, you know, could be seen as just a branch of math. Um, but uh, which, 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 which makes sense, sort of give, you know, under the, the definition that I've given, but then at the other extreme, uh, it is engineering because you are, you're concerned with building actual devices that will, uh, uh, that, that will, that will, that will implement these mathematical ideas, you know, that will, uh, uh, sort of breathe fire into them, so to speak. And, um, uh, so, you know, there is, you know, there, there's, there's, I mean, I mean, pe people, uh, like to say that nothing with the word science in its name really is one. Right, and uh, you know, computer science. Uh, well, you know, I, I, it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a maybe maybe an uninteresting semantic question. What you choose to call science, right? I mean, if 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 science has to be empirical, I mean, computer science does have an empirical aspect in that uh, you are often you know using computers to experiment, right? You are trying things out. You are running a program. You're seeing what happens. It's different from experimenting with nature, right? Because, you know, uh, in some sense, everything that happens is, you know, in principle, completely determined, you know, by this program that you wrote. And if only you were smart enough, you would have seen it all at first, okay? But uh, it is, uh, it shares with science, you know, the, uh, the, the feature that you, you constantly get results that, that you didn't expect, you know, that tell you that your initial guess was wrong. Right, so there is sort of something that you are looking at, you know, like let's say the output of your computer program that pushes back against you, you know, that forces you to revise your, your original ideas. Uh, so it does have that empirical aspect, you know, that, that, that could justify the name science maybe. Uh, but then, you know, I would say it, uh, um, um, you know, the, the writer Paul Graham said computer science is a little bit like Yugoslavia, right? like these different things put together by accident of history, right? So, you know, at one extreme, you have pure math, and at the other extreme, you have engineering, you have building, building actual devices, uh, you know, testing the devices, uh, trying to break the devices, you know, see if they're secure or insecure. Um, so it, it's, um, it's all of that. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's, um, you know, like, like in, in the, in the, uh, I guess in the in the uh, uh, from 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 an, from an outsider's point of view, you know, the, the field is uh, um, um, in, um, inextricably uh, linked with these actual devices. You know, the ones that I'm you know using to talk to you right now, for example. You know, and that and that's natural because these devices have you know uh, you know you know we, we we do actually build them now, and you know they have changed uh, the face of civilization. Uh, but I, I would say that 
you know, computer science existed even before there were computers, right? right. Uh, it, it, it's more, it, it, it's broader than, than, than uh, these, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, these, these uh, devices with silicon chips, right? Uh, you can, you know, you can see computation in the brain, you can see it in markets, you can see it in uh, quantum mechanical systems. Uh, so, it, so it really is, you know, a, a sort of um, a way of looking at, at uh, just about anything in the world. Right. Yeah. Um, and so you like to think of the, the sort of the arc of the history of computer science and, and you did your, your timeline for mm -hmm. MIT's anniversary, um, which was, I guess, almost mm -hmm. um, 10 years ago. But, yeah. um, you know, it started with Euclid and basically ends with you know, now, as you say, the Zoom algorithm or, or what have you, and then it has mm -hmm. Ada Lovelace and Don Knuth in between. Um, mm -hmm. Like, how do you think of the history of computer science, broadly speaking, or, or what did that process of doing that timeline, which must have seemed like oh. quite a daunting task, what did that? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was asked to make a timeline with the sort of most important, you know, uh, 150 milestones in the history of computer science, and you know, it, you know, any exercise like that is is a little bit of a, a you know a, a parlor game, right? Uh, you know, there's no objective answer about what were the most important things, but so I, I you know I decided to look at what other people had done and and uh, you know who what what um. Uh, had people considered, you know, to be important milestones. I knew that I wanted a mixture of uh, theoretical advances, of uh, practical advances in computing, you know, that the average person would know about, and and sort of everything in between. Um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, what 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 I didn't want was. Uh, um, uh, milestones like you know the uh, you know the one millionth floppy disk or, or something right you know that are just some arbitrary numerical you know thing right I didn't want uh, things you know that had to do with the public recognition of of uh, computing like you know Time magazine naming a computer or its person of the year or whatever right uh, uh, you know I wanted a uh, sort of the 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 introduction of concepts that, that ended up being important, right? You know, whether 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 for better or for worse, right? So I have, uh, uh, I think I think in my list I had uh, the time hierarchy theorem, which is a fundamental result, you know, from the 60s that says that when you have more time, you can compute more functions than if you have less time, you know, basically, right? So there's not like a a largest amount of time that you need to compute everything, right? And, you know, and then I also had like, you know, the introduction of the Mac and of, and of Windows and of, uh, um, I think I had, I had the Stuxnet worm, right? Uh, which, which is what targeted the, the Iranian centrifuges. I had, you know, uh, uh, milestones about, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the introduction of, uh, uh, the major social media platforms, right? So, so there were things that like the the average person would have heard of, and there were things that the 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 average person would not have heard of, but maybe you know to to people in in you know within the field would have been sort of the deeper things that that you know maybe all the other stuff was downstream of. Um, and um, you know, I had I actually had more than 150 milestones, and then I had readers of my blog vote on them. So, you know, uh, to, to sort of n n n narrow it down to 150. Um, so, you know, I don't know if the list is good or not, but it was, you know, I, I just tried to uh, answer the charge that I was given by this uh, MIT celebration committee at the time. Yeah, no, it's yeah. fascinating reading and there's yeah. some, you know, some, as you say, there's some nice surprises in there and, you know, it sends you. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there was also the, the, I mean, there was also the question of just how far back do you go in history, right? right. So, you know, I, I had something about the, uh, the Antikythera mechanism, which was this astronomical computer, you know, really amazing one from about 2,000 years ago that was dredged out of the ocean, uh, you know, or dredged out of the Mediterranean. Um, you know, I, I had, uh, um, you know, so I think, you know, something about, about, 
about Euclid, I had about Leibniz, about uh, Babbage, right? But then, you know, obviously the pace of milestones picks up enormously as you get into the 20th century, uh, uh, you know, and then it, it just reaches this, um, uh, 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 you know, a, a, a extreme rate in, let's say, the 60s and 70s. Um, I, uh, um, um, a little bit worryingly, the pace of milestones that I uh, found, you know, worth mentioning seemed to have slowed more recently. I mean, it could just be a matter of, you know, w w w uh, once we have more hindsight, then we'll be able to identify the things that are happening now that, that you know, that ended up being historically important, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, I were, if I were making that list today, I would certainly include, for example, the GPT-3 text engine, right, which was just the... Uh, loosed on the world uh, a couple of months ago. Right, and just wrote an op-ed in The Guardian arguing mm. for its own existence. Did you see that? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I did see that, yes. Okay. Well, I or, mean, or, or, or arguing why it's not harmful to humans. Yeah. You know, like only, only occasionally straying from the topic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The scariest part of that for me was that, that the editors found it was, it was much more easy to edit the the AI's <laughs> op -ed and humans op -ed. right good sign for for writers um right. but so yeah coming up more into our present day um mm -hmm. like over the course of your career what mm -hmm. advancements have have really surprised you or have changed your own trajectory um well, I mean, uh, maybe the obvious thing for me would be uh, quantum computing, right? I mean, this is, uh, you know, what, what I've been doing for, you know, all, all, almost the whole time I've been in theoretical computer science, right? But when I, when I, learned, when I first learned about uh, uh, computer science, uh, about the, the theory of computer science as a, as a teenager, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I learned about P and NP and about NP completeness and, um, you know, it seemed like there was more than enough richness there to, you know, occupy a person for their, for their whole life. And uh, uh, um, um, quantum computing was this weird thing that, you know, I, I read about in a popular article and there was some guy named Peter Shore who had discovered some algorithm for, you know, allegedly for quickly fact factoring huge numbers with, you know, this uh, different kind of computer and, you know, thereby breaking uh, the encryption that we, we currently use. And my first reaction to it was, you know, this, is, this, this, this sounded like garbage, right? This sounded like some physicists who just did not understand the enormity of what they were up against. That, uh, uh, um, you know, the, the, you know, the charge Turing thesis, right? That basically, you know, everything is Turing computation. And, you know, if, if someone, uh, uh, you know, the, the experience in computer science over decades had been that if someone claims something uh, from, 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 from physics that, that, is, that, that is not sort of uh, reducible to Turing computation or simulatable right, by a Turing machine, then, you know, they're just wrong, right? They have you know, sort of idealize some aspect of the laws of physics that once you look at it more closely, then, um, you know, then, then a computer, you know, a, a perfectly conventional computer can simulate it. Right? But, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I decided at some point that I had to learn what this quantum computing was. And, um, you know, what I found was, okay, well, well uh, 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 first of all, you know, in terms of, the, you know, it doesn't change the laws of what is computable, right? Anything that's computable by a quantum computer is also computable by an ordinary computer. Okay, but it might, you know, uh, wildly change the laws of what is efficiently computable, right? Uh, so you could, uh, uh, you might be able to do things with a quantum computer with uh, only a polynomial scaling, like, uh, you know, a, an amount of time that increases only linearly or quadratically with the size of your problem, where a classical computer uh, would need time that, that grows exponentially with the size of the problem. And, you know, the, the way that you would do that is by exploiting uh, uh, this, you know, uh, amazing discovery that was made a century ago, which is that, you know, the, the world is, uh, uh, is quantum mechanical. 
uh, you know, that if you want to describe uh, a physical system, you, you can't just say where all the particles are. You need to give this not, not complex number called an amplitude uh, for every possible way that the particles could be. Okay, so, uh, so you know, for just a thousand particles, there might be, you know, two to the thousand power or even more ways that they could be. And every possible way that they could be gets another one of these amplitudes, right? Now, that's an absolutely staggering claim about, about physics. Uh, you know, it, it um, you know, I, uh, um, but, but, but as far as a century of, uh, physical experiments can tell, it seems to be correct, right? And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing in a way that it took as long as it did for people to start asking, well, well what does that mean for computation, right? But, uh, but that was, um, that was, that was a real change to, to my worldview. I mean, once I realized, you know, what, you know, sort of the, what quantum mechanics was and that it was saying something of, you know, of, of comparable enormity to uh, what Church and Turing had said, you know, about, about computation, uh, then, you know, it became clear, well, we, yeah, if, if, if quantum mechanics is right, then sure, in principle, you should be able to build these quantum computers. Uh, you know, it, it, the, the more radical possibility would be if you can't build them, right? If, uh, if there's some reason why quantum computers would not work, then that, that would actually be a revolution in physics. You know, if they hmm. couldn't be built. Uh, you know, the, the idea that they can be built is just a conservative possibility. And, um, you know, quantum computing was a new field at the time. And so there, was a, there were a lot of very, very basic open questions. And so I got interested in it. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, I mean, as long as, you know, uh, uh, one is doing theoretical computer science anyway, right? And, you know, where, where it's, a, it's a study of, you know, that, that's often very, very far removed from practical application, right? Then, um, you know, one, one might as well ask, you know, what do the known laws of physics imply about the ultimate limits of computation or of, of efficient computation? Right, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and that was really the motivation for me. I mean, uh, you know, I, I mean, I hope that we'll see practical quantum computers. I hope that they'll be useful for something, but all of that is really icing on the cake, right? I mean, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the point is really, you know, that, that there is this uh, um, merger between physics and computation, right? That, uh, uh, um, you know, people trying to understand quantum mechanics, people trying to understand computation, two of, you know, the most fundamental things that you could possibly ask about, right, you know, are now have this channel where they can talk to each other and often they need to talk to each other. Uh, and so, so that, that was, that was a, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a revelation to me and that sort of uh, you know, uh, um, obviously changed the trajectory of my career. Um, yeah, I mean, I could talk about other surprises, but maybe I should let you go on. Um, well, so what would you say is the is the most important contribution you've made then in that in that field? Um, well, okay. I mean, I mean, probably the the uh, thing that I did that had the most you know obvious uh, uh, sort of a broader impact to use uh, the, the, the NSF's, you know, uh, bureaucratic term for, for it, uh, it uh, would be uh, the, uh, the work that, that I did with colleagues on sort of establishing the theoretical foundations for what's called quantum supremacy. Okay, uh, quantum supremacy means, you know, the, uh, uh, the use of a quantum computer, which may be a, a small, noisy quantum computer, you know, but sort of the first use of a quantum computer to do something to, uh, that is, that we're pretty sure is hard to stimulate using a classical computer, okay? Now note that I did not say something useful. Uh, you know, uh, 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 the um, pr problem being solved uh, can be a completely contrived benchmark, okay? But you could think of it uh, as analogous to 
you know, the Wright brothers' airplane or to uh, Enrico Fermi's, you know, nuclear chain reaction, right? The goal is to prove the point that, you know, we can build a quantum computer and, you know, it can, it can solve some well-defined problem much faster than anyone knows how to solve that same problem with a classical computer, okay? And, and not only that, but it can do that for, for reasons that are uh, for, tied to it being a quantum computer, right? So, you know, no, no one can explain how it's doing the thing much faster without making reference to this exponential number of amplitude, you know, that I, that I talked about before. Uh, so that's, that's what quantum supremacy means. The, the, the actual term was coined by John Preskill in 2012, and it's stuck for better or worse. Not, 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 not everyone likes the term, but, uh, um, but you know, but, but uh, um, some of us had been thinking about, you know, what, what became known as, as quantum supremacy, you know, from, uh, you know, 2009, 2010 or so, and, you know, in particular, um, you know, it started as a very theoretical study of uh, just, you know, how, how hard of a, uh, a computational problem, say in the sense of complexity theory, can you encode into the amplitudes of a, of a quantum computation, right? So, uh, so, so it started with these fairly arcane questions in uh, quantum complexity theory. But uh, uh, just, you know, uh, in order to create a quantum computation that had um, like certain like hard functions called permanence of matrices uh, in the amplitudes, uh, my student Alex Arkhipov and I were led to study uh, systems of identical bosons, uh, such as photons, right, uh, that would pass through some network of uh, beam splitters and then get measured, right? And, this was a proposal that we called boson sampling, okay? And, uh, uh, a, you know, after we had sort of proved the, all the, these theorems about this proposal, uh, what surprised us was that all of these experimental quantum optics people got all excited about it, right? And they were like, well, you know, uh, you're talking about bosons. Well, you know, we have bosons in our lab, right? We have, you know, we, 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 we do exactly this, we generate, uh, uh, we can generate single photons. We can send them through beam splitter networks. And so maybe we could try to demonstrate quantum supremacy, right? Try to demonstrate doing, you know, the first computation that would be hard to simulate with a classical computer. And so, so they managed to do boson sampling, like first with three photons, then with five, six, most recently with 14 photons. Now, to actually outperform a classical computer, you would need um, at least, let's say, 60, 70, or um, uh, maybe 100 photons, okay? And so, so, uh, so, so they're, 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 they're not there yet, okay? But in the meantime, something else happened, which was that around um, 2015, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, Google uh, hired uh, John Martinez, who was, um, you know, maybe uh, the, the most famous uh, superconducting qubits uh, experimentalist in the world uh, to form a group to actually try to build scalable quantum computers based on superconducting qubits. And, um, uh, you know, and, and so, so they, they came up with a plan where, you know, that they, they, they thought that they could make a, a chip with 50 to 70 programmable qubits. Right? And just to put this in context, I mean, what we hope for eventually is, you know, millions of qubits, right, that would be fully error corrected, that would last as long as you need them to. Right now we're talking about 50 or 60 qubits uh, that are not at all error corrected, right, so they're very noisy. Okay, but, uh, you know, they, they actually do behave as qubits for, you know, an appreciable, you know, enough time to do a, uh, you know, maybe a couple dozen layers of operations, right? So they, you know, you, you know, you, they are fully programmable 20 years ago. I mean, the experimentalists were mostly playing around with one or two qubits, right? And, that, and ones that were much noisier than these 50 or 60 qubits. Okay, so, so you know, things had really come a long way, okay? But, uh, but then, you know, the, the, the question that confronted the team at Google was, 
once we build this chip, you know, of 50 or so qubits, you know, supposing it works, what do we do with it, right? Uh, um, you know, it's, it's not clear that there's anything especially useful that you can do with such a chip. There might or might not be, but can we at least prove that it's getting a speed up over a classical computer? Can we at least sort of prove the point that, you know, uh, uh, quantum speed ups are real, you know, that, 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 that they can work? Uh, you know, can we demonstrate this milestone of quantum supremacy? And so they, um, they, they decided to really target that as a goal. You know, that was not an obvious decision. You know, IBM and others said quantum supremacy is irrelevant. We don't care about it, okay? But uh, Google said, we're going to go for this, but, you know, how do we do it? And they said, we want to do something like boson sampling, okay? But, you know, more tailored to our superconducting qubit. So we talked to them and we came up with a proposal for, you know, that became known as random circuit sampling. And it was just sort of the simplest benchmark that, you know, sort of aligned with the, uh, uh, the, the uh, details of their system. And then they said, you know, look, you know, uh, 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 rather than adapting our, you know, hardware to your theory, uh, we want you to adapt your theory to our hardware. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, you, you theorists seem, seem, seem cheaper, right? So, uh, so, so can you do that? And we said, yes, yes, we, uh, we think we can do that. So then we did some, you know, theoretical analysis of, uh, um, you know, of this random circuit sampling, like if, you know, supposing that Google is able to do this, uh, how should you verify the results? And how hard would it then be for a classical computer to spoof those results? You know, can we prove under some reasonable computational assumptions that, you know, that spoofing with a classical computer is hard? So we did that analysis and um, you probably know the, uh, the conclusion of the story, which was just about a year ago, uh, Google actually managed to demonstrate this, this quantum supremacy with uh, 53 qubits. Uh, it, um, you know, it, it, you know, they, they, the, 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 the signal that they can extract is tiny. They have to repeat millions of times. You know, they have to take millions of samples in order to be even be able to extract a statistical signal uh, of, 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 of quantum supremacy. Uh, but, uh, but even, you know, repeating millions of times, right, they can do that in about three minutes. And, you know, using the largest supercomputer the largest classical supercomputers that are on earth, um, you know, it, it seems like it would take at the very least a few days, you know, to do the same thing. And that would be with hundreds of thousands of parallel processors, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to just this one uh, superconducting chip. So, so that was the demonstration of quantum supremacy. Uh, you know, nature featured it uh, on, uh, you know, its uh, 150th anniversary cover, right? So, uh, you know, I think it was a huge milestone for the field, for science. And just to be clear, you know, I uh, uh, was not part of the engineering team that, uh, 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 that, that, that achieved this. But, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm very proud that, that uh, some of the theory that we did that started as very abstruse complexity theory, you know, actually ended up being relevant to an actual experiment. You know, I mean, who yeah. was the thought? Yeah. That's the nice union of the... Theoretical, yeah. mathematical, and the yeah. engineering. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and so, where do you see things going from here? Like, what's top of mind for you currently? First of all, uh, figuring out, you know, uh, you know, you know, in, in in the coming years, we're going to have quantum computers that will not be fully scalable, right, or fully error corrected, but they may have a hundred qubits, two hundred, three hundred qubits. Um, you know, of a good enough quality that you could maybe start to do something useful, uh, but what, right? And uh, uh, what, 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 uh, uh, what do you do with them? Uh, you know, are you, uh, are you really sure that you're getting an advantage over a classical computer? Uh, you know, now a, a huge downside of the uh, uh, quantum supremacy demonstration that was done, right, or the, 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 the stuff like boson sampling, like random circuit sampling, is that verifying the results of these computations 
you know, is, is, is itself extremely hard, right? Uh, right. So you have to do an extremely expensive classical computation and an exponential time one, actually, just to verify that the quantum computer did what it was supposed to do, right? Now, you know, of course, the classical computation, you can do at your leisure, right? You can, uh, you know, you can take as much time as you need to verify what the quantum computer did very quickly. But uh, you could say, you know, um, 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 ultimately, you know, you're not, uh, uh, we, 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 with, with these ideas, we're never going to, you know, be able to use a quantum computer to, uh, 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 to, to, to do something that is, you know, that would have been impossible with our classical computers and know that it was impossible with them because if, if, if so, then we wouldn't have even be able to verify the answer with our classical computers, right? right. So, uh, so, so, you know, now, now, you know, the, the first, you know, uh, uh, super famous quantum algorithm, you know, uh, 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 to be discovered, I guess, you know, Shor's factoring algorithm did not have this, this feature because when you find the prime factors of an enormous number, then, you know, you, uh, um, um, anyone can easily check the, the result, right? Like if you've, or if you've broken a crypto system, if you, you know, you can get, you know, a, 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 a decrypt someone's message, uh, you know, at that point, you know, that person doesn't have to uh, uh, take your word for it that you have a quantum computer, right? They're, 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 they're scared anyway, right? You can just show them the, 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 the you, can, you can show them the, the, the decrypted message. Um, so, uh, but, but, but the, the trouble is that Shor's algorithm seems to require, you know, a fully error corrected qubit and many thousands of them before you're going to be able to break uh, 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 encryption in that way. And that, that's uh, probably not in the next decade. You know, I would be very surprised if, if we see such things in the next decade. But, uh, you know, with, with these sort of noisy uh, intermediate scale devices that we're going to see, you know, what can we do that is interesting uh, where we can actually quickly check the answer to it? and ideally where it's even useful for someone. Okay, so this is a major place where uh, a theory is going to be playing a role, you know, in the, in the coming years. Uh, so that, that, that I would say is on the more practical side, you know, on the more theoretical side, um, I've gotten more and more interested uh, over the last decade in uh, what's called the, the, uh, the It From Cupid uh, uh, collaboration, which is actually comes from the, the uh, uh, or is funded by the Simons Foundation. Um, mm -hmm. This is an effort to bring together quantum computing and quantum information theory with uh, quantum gravity, with you know, the people who study the black hole information problem and uh, mm -hmm. uh, string theory and ADS-CFT. And you know, an amazing thing that has happened over the last decade is that the people who worry about you know, how does information get out of a black hole and these very deep questions like that have started talking about those questions in the language of qubits and quantum circuits and quantum computation and polynomial time and you know uh, uh, and and then you know they they they've started coming to us with questions and you know I am uh, 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 certainly not a string theorist you know by any you know, stretch of the imagination. My, uh, uh, um, you know, my, my, um, you know, I have, I have very embarrassing gaps in my knowledge of physics. Okay, but I've, I've tried to help the quantum gravity people as a sort of uh, uh, theoretical computer science consultant. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, again and again, they have come, come up with questions. That are actually phrased in in a language that I understand, and you know I've been able to collaborate with them. This is uh, people like like Lenny Suskin, who's really been the the, the leader of this effort. Um, um, Daniel Harlow, um, you know, and uh, uh, really uh, uh, um, um, high energy physicists or you know uh, uh, um, string theorists, quantum gravity theorists, who are more and more learning the language of computer science. So I'll probably, you know, continue thinking about those sorts of questions too. Hmm. Fascinating. 
Yeah, that's no shortage of food for thought there. <laughs> um, I mean, we also have lots and lots of, you know, old open problems just about, you know, quantum complexity classes and how they relate to each other. And of course, I would still like to pick off some of those. Right. Yeah. 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 Do you find anything worrisome about the direction that computer science is going or does it seem to check itself? I find a lot worrying about the direction that the world is going in. And, you know, uh, 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 computer science is, you know, you know, like, like all of research, all of science is, is uh, um, you know, dependent on the rest of society, right? On humans, like, that's, yeah. It's funny because like when, 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 when people ask, you know, people, uh, people constantly ask me to try to forecast, well, you know, how many years until we have a useful quantum computer? Right. And, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten good at, at sort of talking my way around that kind of question. I like to say, like, if, 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 if I had, you know, any of, you know, in, in, in some sense, like, you know, we can say an enormous amount about, you know, enormously more about the eventual destination that we're heading towards than about sort of the exact technological path to get to that destination. Right. Because, you know, the, the um, uh, 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 you know, a, 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 I mean, once you have a scalable quantum computer, then, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the question of what you can and can't do with it is math, right? It's, uh, uh, and, you know, we can, we can do that math, you know, we, now we can do it with, you know, much of it, you know, without having the computer, uh, but, you know, to, to forecast the, the, uh, twists and turns that technology is going to take, you know, to actually get, you know, to that threshold of quantum universality of, you know, a fully programmable, you know, and fully uh, error corrected quantum computer. That's incredibly hard. And that depends on all kinds of things like how much money people want to spend on it, you know, whether there is another great depression, whether there's, you know, uh, uh, you know, whether there's some pandemic that, you know, cripples civilization, uh, yeah. you know, a hypothetical possibility, right? Uh, it, it, it depends on so many things that are, that are really hard to forecast or uh, control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. You know, so I mean, to, to, to the extent that I worry, uh, those, are, those are mostly the things that I worry about. Um, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, in, in, like when you're, when you're doing math or, or theoretical computer science, like it's, 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 you, you can, you can have a, ver a very good feeling about it in the sense that, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, uh, a progress can be incredibly hard, you know, sometimes it, it can take, uh, years, decades, you know, even centuries uh, to, to solve uh, a math problem. But uh, the amazing thing is that the progress only goes in one direction, right? All right, you, know, you, can, you can see, you know, it, you, know you, don't, you don't lose a ground that you've gained, right? And, uh, uh, you know, and, and a lot of the things that were, that were open problems when I was a student, uh, uh, 20 years ago are now no longer open problems. You know, of, of course we have new problems, right? But, but uh, um, you know, to the extent that this, you know, uh, uh, process is uh, um, uh, um, able to continue at all, that society is able to support it at all, you know, I do feel pretty good that the process works. Hmm. Maybe, you know, not as quickly as we would like, maybe we can get it to work quicker, but, you know, uh, uh, it, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, um, you know, the amazing thing about math, you know, and look, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I also like sometimes talking about philosophy, talking about questions that might never be answered, right? But, you know, in math, you know, we, we have these questions that sometimes seem unanswerable, but then, you know, uh, a lot of them actually do get answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Nice hey, surprise. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. Thank you. All right. Okay, bye. bye.